Hey guys, what's up? Tyler5310 here and this is my Dell Precision T7500. Coming to you guys a little bit of an upgrade video. So one of the processors in this thing have always run a little bit hotter than the other one. The cooler of the two being this one back here that has the four copper heat pipes and a nice big radiator style cooler on it. Of course, that one has also got a uh, fan attached directly to it on the back. However, the front one, which you guys can see through here, has always run a little bit warmer. And I'm sure you guys can see the culprit. We have the typical little crappy aluminum heat sink for it. And that's just not really adequate. And it's definitely not adequate when I go to the 130 watt Xeon X5690s. So what we're going to do is uh, I just got a part, a Dell 40, Dell, uh, I think it's an A402U, which is the uh, upgraded heat pipe cooler for this thing. And when I say upgraded, I'll just have to show you guys. So... Let's go ahead and knock this out. I love how this machine is laid out. So this is the other heat sink I was talking about. And it's a pretty good size heat sink. However, the one that I've got is even bigger. This isn't even the problem one, so I'm gonna set this guy over here. Make sure she doesn't fall because that would be bad. I am talking about that one. Yeah, that is expected to cool a six core Xeon. These are only 95 watt CPUs also, so I mean, it's, it's, it's just not, that ain't it, chief. Yeah, so which one of these look like it's more appropriate for this? Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, I hope this fits in this shroud. This fits in the shroud. Check that difference out though. So this is the cooler. It's not a bad cooler per se, but I mean, it, it just doesn't have the um, the dissipation volume that the uh, bigger one has. The part number for this one the zero two zero twenty one f This is a 0U402F. A lot better, a lot, lot better. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Talk about an upgrade, Jesus. All right, so I'm gonna try to figure out what's gonna be the best way to get this cable routed without, um, without it blocking this and without it blocking the VRM heatsink down there either. Uh, yeah, we're gonna see, see how this goes. That is what I'm talking about, guys. Check it out. That's a lot bigger. I think this will be good. Uh, going along with my 980, I should have enough processing power. Not like I really changed anything, but I'm just ready to go to my go to dual uh, X5690. So this is 3.46 gigahertz with the turbo boost up to a 3.73, which is a good bit better than 2.6 and a turbo of 3.06. So for these guys who don't know, um, <clears throat> got my 980. I've got a uh, Intel um, network card down there. I just noticed there's a USB port on the board. That's cool. Uh, 48 gigs of DDR3 1333 ECC memory. I've got this seven port PCI Express uh, USB 3 card. I've got a Dell PERT 5 or a PERT 6 something. It's a LSI 1060 AD chipset on there and a, my Sound Blaster X5 Titanium up there. I swapped this cable over from my Precision, or my uh, T5400, which you guys can't see, but, well, you can see a little bit. There it is over there. Um, yeah, so that way I could uh, hook it up to the front panel and still use this factory Dell um, front panel header. So uh, I could use, use that. Um, so that's cool, I guess. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, Put it back together, turn it on, see uh, see how my chimps are. Alright, so I ran Prime 95 for about 20 minutes. This is what I was seeing on the second CPU. Max of 77 across all cores. And then on the second CPU, a max of 63. And I'm doing a few things right now and it's idling in the low 20s, low to mid 20s, which is excellent. Second CPU I'm not worried about, um, the fan will kick on higher once it hits a higher temperature, but yeah, I think that's pretty much success, so uh, I'll take it. 
Um, next video might be X5690s. That would be cool. So, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching this video, and I will uh, see you guys in another one. So I'll see you all later. Bye.